Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in this video today we're going to be talking about permanent codes. So there's three different kinds of codes for your engine control module. There's pending codes, there's stored codes, and then there's permanent codes. So if you have a 2010 and newer vehicle and you cannot figure out why your drive monitors are not completing, why they're not even initiating, nothing is complete, well, this is the video that's made for you because I'm going to go into this in depth. I'm also going to go and jump on the state website with you guys and show you guys if your vehicle is listed because your vehicle might be under some sort of recall or courtesy repair that the dealer has to do because they sold you a defective unit where the computer can never clear these permanent codes. And there are people out there that are replacing whole computers because these codes will not clear. So you definitely want to stay tuned till the end of this video because I'm going to show you what you're supposed to do to go ahead and clear these permanent codes. So when your check engine light is on your vehicle, it can be on for either a stored code and a permanent code. So this is a little bit tricky. So this is really aimed for vehicle owners with 2010 and newer vehicles. And I'm going to show you guys why this is so important because if you're trying to pass an emissions test and you can't figure out why your drive cycle is not ready, this is going to be the answer you've been looking for. And so if you have a 2010 and newer vehicle, what happened is there's been some changes in the software that doesn't allow you to actually clear a permanent code. So you can clear a stored code or a pending code, but you cannot clear uh, permanent codes. So let me show you this in depth now. So anytime you're scanning your vehicle, you want to make sure your ignition is on, but your engine is off. You want to connect your OBD2 reader to your port, which is located on the driver's side wheel well area. I have plenty of videos on how to use these. And you are going to need a little bit of a better scan tool than the $20 ones that are out there. So this is the cheapest one that I actually found out there that works for this. This is going to be in the video link below and I think it's under $30 or $40. So it's pretty affordable. And let's go into the actual settings here. So this is OBD2 which stands for Onboard Diagnostics 2. So it started in 96. And this scan tool could work for any, any vehicle 1996 and newer. We got a readiness test. So this is how you can tell if your vehicle is basically ready for a smog. We have settings we have about. But we're going to go ahead and just hit enter into the OBD2. It's pulling up my vehicle data. And it tells me it's got two codes found. So I'm going to go to the two codes. So I have two codes here. And look at the very top right here. It says stored. So that's a stored code. And we have another stored code. Right here we have a pending code, we have another pending code, and this is a permanent code right here. So a permanent code could happen for various different reasons on Ford. It comes up on an EVAP issue, a P456. I get a lot of questions about this. And I can go and use a scanner to go ahead and erase the codes now. And if your vehicle was 2009 and older, this wouldn't affect you. We're going to go back into the codes here. And you guys can see that permanent code is still there. The stored code and the pending code are both gone. So if you want to go ahead and complete your drive cycle and get these inspection monitors ready, what you need to do is basically complete the repair. Let's go here, let's just say the mass airflow sensor was bad and I replaced it and now the vehicle has this permanent code. What I'm going to have to do now is go ahead and complete the repair and once the repair is completed I'm going to go and let the vehicle just sit until it's cool to the touch and I'm going to start the vehicle. Once the vehicle idles for about five to ten minutes I'm going to go ahead and go drive for about 10 minutes around town. And the official rules basically say you have to do this 15 times and a total of 200 miles. From my own experience, this is not true. There's people that have gotten this ready 
in six or seven warm-ups and myself I can get this ready because my vehicle is maybe a little bit newer so the older your vehicle is the older the components are you may really have to do it the 15 times or 200 miles minimum but I have seen it where it does get ready a little faster and what will happen is this code will basically be self-clear so the computer will get rid of this permanent code itself and then you can proceed to do the drive cycle this is such a pain in the rear guys because this is going to take so many vehicles off the road and sometimes it's really not the vehicle's fault it, it could be a bad and defective vehicle so i'm going to hop behind my computer to show you guys the bureau of automotive repair here in california and all the vehicles that are listed there and you can check if your vehicle is on the list because sometimes your computer drive cycle is not getting ready and it might be under a courtesy repair where they basically replace the computer for you for free. I have heard of people replacing whole computers because this will not clear. So let's hop behind the computer and see what happens. Hey guys, if you guys are finding the video to be helpful, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are here at the California Bureau of Automotive Repair and I'm gonna have a link to these three pages I'm gonna cover with you guys in the video description box below as well as the drive cycles for your particular vehicle so if you want to know step-by-step -step directions I will cover that and make sure that you guys review this information here in depth so this is the very first page here and it's pretty cool because it basically tells you a lot about the smog system and how you can learn more about OBD2 and really how this affects you and what vehicles basically it applies to. Then we have this second page here and on this page here we have information about those permanent diagnostic codes that we covered earlier and really when this started taking effect. I think this took effect sometime in was July 1st, 2019. And if you're watching this in another state, the same information may apply to you. Your state might have a special program that somehow relates to this information because California tends to be the forerunner and the strictest in the country as far as emissions. So it tells you really what rates of vehicles are going to basically fail because of this. And these are potential vehicles that are going to be off the road because of this permanent diagnostic trouble code it tells you about that drive cycle that I told you about earlier about the 15 cycles and 200 miles in a little bit more depth and there is financial help if you do need it and this is my favorite page right here because this applies to a lot of people so we have a lot of information here and cars are added on all the time when they figure out there's actually defective vehicles so these are the current rules in California as far as drive cycles that are exempt so if you have a 96 through 99 vehicle you can basically have any one monitor unset if you have a 2000 and newer vehicle you can have the EVAP monitor unset and covers diesels and then it also tells you things about the check engine light here we have more information but let's skip to the good stuff so if you see right here if you have a 2000 to 2004 Audi A4 or A6 this is likely a broken vehicle and it tells you what to do here and we also have other vehicles here so we have a Dodge that's broken and it tells you the TSP to look for and the last Dodge that we just saw right here if you guys see this actually has a lifetime warranty so you want to make sure before you spend one dollar out of your pocket that you check this whole list for your vehicle and to see what really can be done because no matter how well you do this even if you did your repair correctly you might just have that broken vehicle so I'm hoping you guys are finding this information to be helpful and go ahead and cruise the rest of this info here and let me know if you guys have any questions that I can help answer 
And at the end of the video, you guys will also find links to the drive cycles, any individual monitors on how to set those, some cheats that I have for catalyst, oxygen sensors, and different monitors. So really appreciate you guys watching. And one last thing, if you want to see what happens if you actually fix the issue and not reset the check engine light, stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'll have a link that will basically go over the whole process of me just completing the repair and not resetting the check engine light and seeing how the vehicle actually adapts and if it's able to do it itself. Thanks.